Hey everybody, Brian Goulet here of GouletPens.com, and I have David Parker here of Fig Boot on Pens, fellow pen reviewer, <laughs> pen blogger, if you will. I don't know, what is your, what, what do we call ourselves? I don't really know. I, vlogger? I guess, yeah, vlogger, I guess. Vlogger, yeah. I mean, we're I not... actually don't say blogger because I'm not really writing a blog. So <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't really know, you know, it's kind of like Wild West territory in terms of yes. the things that we do, but... Uh, avid pen fan, you review them, yep. you talk about them. Uh, Customer of yours as well. Yes, thank you. I always appreciate the support. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's always interesting because, you know, anybody can, can do this, you know? Like, you, you don't have necessarily a pen reviewing background. No. <laughs> you know, you just, how, how long have you been, been doing the pen review thing? Uh, I believe it was... Uh, like October of 2016, I started. Okay. Yeah, October of 2016, I started. And um, it was one of those things that for me, it was just a really an extension of the hobby. Sure. So that I, um, or maybe it was 2015, maybe I'm losing track, but um, <laughs> it was in October. Okay. And that it was a thing to where I enjoyed collecting pens and yeah. was um, kind of uh, writing on my own as far as my own thoughts on each of the pens that I would purchase. Okay. Um, I've always been into video production. I, at one point, I wanted to go to film school and had a video background. And so okay. I, I've always enjoyed the production aspect. So you just had a knack for yeah. like a natural interest in that. Uh, that, makes so that makes sense. Also, it's one of those things to where I would watch, you know, I'd watch Stephen Brown, I'd watch Matt Armstrong, I'd watch you, okay. and that... You know, sometimes you see other people do something and you're like, I can't do that. There's no way on earth I could do that. Right, but right. I thought to myself, you know what? I could at least, I could do something like yeah. that. I could make a, sh you know, and, and I, and then you think to yourself, what could I bring to the table that no one else can bring? Right. You know, why would someone watch me over somebody else? Okay. And so I kind so of. So you were thinking about all this yeah. as you were thinking, maybe I should start doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Because okay. I wanted, I even wrote down like pros and cons as far as like, what what are the good things and what are the bad things yeah. and that I I actually wrote everything down and then was on the verge of deciding not to do it because I I decided really? decide not to do it. Wow. And then, okay. Um, and then I, I've let him know this, but Stephen uh, Brown came out with a video that is like uh, like why aren't you doing reviews? That's like his mm -hmm. video. He came up with, the, and I watched that, and that was literally like it, the like, week. Spoke to you. Oh yeah. yeah. I was like, you know what? Okay, that? I'm doing it. And, and and I like the fact that. Everyone in the space is so supportive. Yeah, and um, uh, like I came up with a video recently because um, I want to be supportive as well. And I, it was not necessarily why aren't you doing reviews, but it was right. kind of more of a hey, you've decided to do reviews now what you know type of thing, right. and how you can kind of get started and on the production aspect of it, and mm -hmm. kind of the organization and and how you whether whether it's this content or creating other content. Okay, I've decided I want to create content now what do I do? Because right. I want to be as helpful as I can because, hey, others are helpful to me and then I still need help from others. Right. And, and so you try to give back. That's cool. That's really cool. Especially because, you know, you, you had an interest in pens first. You had an interest in the video stuff. That's really cool to hear about. Like, I didn't know you were that connected to Stephen Brown and like his encouragement and the timing of that too. It's like sometimes oh, yeah. things just work out like that. Absolutely. You know, that's really cool. And that, you know, it's one of those hopes that maybe, you know, a couple of years from now, someone's going to say, hey, you know what, I, I'm I, I'm doing this now because I, I saw David do this down the line, or I saw Brian do this down the line. Well, and that's, you know, maybe in a small way, that's what I'm hoping, like a video or like this, like you, you reached out to me, you were passing through, you're from North Carolina, Yes. you're going to D.C., and we're like right off the highway. We're not open to the public. I'm sorry to everybody. <laughs> but David and I connected, when did we connect? Like a year and a half ago yeah, or something, something we've, like we've that. We've been in touch for a little bit. Um, partly because, you know, you started getting into the reviewing thing. And anytime somebody starts a reviewing blog or vlog or whatever, I'm always like, trying to get to know that person and encourage, because it, it's hard. It's a lot of work, right? It's oh, a lot absolutely. Of time. You know? there, that's why you have to really enjoy it. It has to be yeah, fun for you for sure. because it is a lot of work. And so you have to almost, like I said, think of it as an extension of the hobby. Exactly. You know, okay, could I be playing around with pens now or can I be working on writing a review? Right. Because it's a little on, different, yeah. right? Like it's a different work. It's still yeah. around pens. But when you're editing a video or scripting out what you want to say or planning out your schedule, like that actually doesn't have anything to do with pens necessarily. Yes. And then the enjoyment of getting to sit down and write with the pens, that's actually like on top of everything else. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the, in doing so, it really helps 
it's really helped me build relationships. Yeah. Um, to extend my social my social network and social family uh, tremendously. Yeah. And that I could I travel just about anywhere in the country, and I could probably find someone in there that area to connect with. Yeah. And that I couldn't have done that otherwise. And so uh, the hobby has given back a lot to me as well. That's really. Cool. But yeah, but putting together reviews does take a lot of time. For me, it can vary, but maybe. Maybe four to five hours. Maybe okay. I'm considering per, like, per review. Yeah, per review. Okay. Maybe a little bit it's more. Not too bad. It's considering not too bad. the time it takes to 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 write, to actually spend time with a pen, because you're not just getting it and then just doing the review right away. Right. Uh, and then all of the post production and the post production almost takes as much time as the uh, doing it itself. For sure. Um, you know, and then you get sick of looking at your face for the. <laughs> 10th time, you know, the same video over and over again. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've, like, gotten to the point where I I'm not even sick of it anymore because I'm so, it's like, I don't even, I don't even really see it. Yeah. Or, like, when, you know, it's like when you hear yourself on a voicemail or you hear yourself on video, you know, most people, you're, like, kind of weird hearing your own voice. I don't even, it yeah. doesn't bother me anymore. It just, you get to a point where you, you, you just get used to it. My biggest challenge at time is, times is getting a house full of people quiet in order for me to actually <laughs> shoot. <laughs> Because, sure, sure. And then we got a dog uh, not too long ago, and so now it's trying to get the the dog quiet. Oh, and, yeah. And so, you know, there's times when I can shoot either like late at night or right. or, or something like that when the house is quiet. <laughs> but that's always every once in a while you hear things going on in the background, and it seems like we have one of those houses that if someone's watching TV on the other side uh -huh. of the house, you could hear it. And so, right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, so yes, I, you try to be. A con considerate of the rest of the family as well, <laughs> as opposed to poking your head out and say, okay, quiet for the next 45 minutes, no right. one talk. So you try to, you know, everyone gets <laughs> sick of the hobby in the house. So uh, right. you, you have to- and it's like borderline anyway, right? Oh yeah, like yeah. They're like, really? Really? You want me to, is this disrupting my life now? Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no one else cares except for me. <laughs> That's interesting. Go make your videos. Right, you know? go do your weird thing over there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, I mean, they got to be supported to a degree, right? Oh, yes. You know, of course. <laughs> uh, and that, you know, we had that uh, one of our girls is, is starting to kind of look at maybe creating some of her own content, uh, you know, for something different. Oh, interesting. And, and so okay. it, it might be, uh, you know, at least, um, uh, you know, that she might be creating something. And so it's, uh, you know, I'm here to support and be helpful. Right. But, uh, you know, I'm not trying to push too much. But it, I think you have to really want to do it. You can't have someone push you to it. That's interesting. My kids have kind of done the same thing. My kids are six and eight. So I yeah. think they're a little younger than yours. Yeah. Um, but they have recently, you know, we have an iPad at home. And they've recently taken, they watched these YouTube videos of people that do skits with My Little Pony or Lego yep. or whatever, and they actually take the iPad and they're kind of acting out. And to the point where they say like, uh, be sure to leave your comments and we'll see you in the next <laughs> video, like in their own little, and I'm like, oh my gosh, my <laughs> kids are naturally becoming like little YouTubers. Oh, And I, and I can't like, you know, yeah. I'm like, well, uh, you know, they're they're watching this stuff. I'm like, you know, that's like what, what your daddy does, right? <laughs> now something, I am very excited for you. Why is, is that? Okay, is you are closing in on a milestone on your yes. YouTube channel. Yes, very And do you very know what quickly. you get? Yeah, you get the plaque uh, with yes. the play button. I yeah. want you to have behind here <laughs> on the wall, I want to see that, that silver play button. Yeah, so because that's that's a that's a big thing. Yeah, and we're like right on the cusp. So oh yeah, like we might even hit it by the time this video publishes. But yeah. we, when you hit a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube, they send you this like shadow box that has a silver play button that's like this big. Yeah, uh, and some of the other YouTubers that I follow, they they have the button. Then you get like a gold cool. one at a million, and a million, and, and, and then a, then a, diamond, like a diamond one at, at 10, ten million. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever see any so of those. But I, I never thought we'd see that silver one. Oh. I, that, that's I only, incredible. I was only aware like two months ago that that was even a thing, yeah. like that that you get anything when you hit a milestone. Yeah. So. And, and I'm realistic. I understand. You know, I can see. <laughs> you know, even the people that have been doing this longer than I have, the the range. It would take a lot to get for me to get to a hundred thousand. Well, but who yeah. knows? I'm not saying never, but. Um, but so I'm gonna live vicariously through you and your uh, play button that you'll get here shortly. I don't know. Put your dog on more. Or yeah. Maybe like you know, depending on uh, how if your daughters have a knack for it, you know, throw them yeah. on. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. It's do crazy. something like that. So. It's crazy. So, but yeah, that would be pretty cool, and I'll definitely show that off. Oh you yeah. You yeah. need to do an unboxing of the uh, of the play button. I'm that would be pretty cool. That. that would be pretty cool. Yeah. And you know, it's of course none of it is for any of that. It's like. When you start doing this, just you do it because you love it. Oh yeah, and and uh, I mean at this point we've done fourteen hundred videos here, um, so it's like you know over 
eight and a half year, a little over eight years, I think. You, you have to enjoy it because if it turns into a job, then right. you kind of lose the passion for it and it's no longer fun. Right. Now, are, are there some videos and things like that that are more tedious to make than others? Sure, and sure. Yes, yes. There's, there's, sometimes you have to do something as opposed to wanting to do something. Yeah. But, but for the most part, you have to have fun. But I can honestly see how someone could get burnt out on that because it is a large time commitment. It is. You got You have to love it. Even yeah. it, like me. So what's interesting about me is like it is kind of my job, or at least it has been a part of my job for the entirety of doing this. These days it's harder because we have a team of forty-two, and you see, you've you've seen our building now yeah. in person. It's a it's a decent sized operation. Oh, absolutely. Like even to sit down with this video, I had to take a phone call from a vendor of ours, you know, about some logistical stuff. And it's like, that's the business, right? Like, and so I'm dealing with that. And then the video stuff is kind of on top of all of that. Yeah. Uh, but still it's like, I have a financial incentive, if you will, to be involved in it for this long, but you don't really, like you're just purely doing it for the passion. Yeah, that, you know, it's a, it's a passion and it's a hobby. It keeps me out of trouble uh, you know, other than buying some pens. Right. Now, right. Um, you know, I, I have tapered down a bit, but then it seems like while well, I'm not, I, I, I've reduced the quantity, the, the dollar the value <laughs> goes up. I can appreciate that. Uh, you know, it, it takes more to, to get me excited, so yeah. to speak. Um, but, you know, it, it's a lot of fun to, be, to belong to the community. Sure. Um, to, to be able to, by, by no means do I uh, do what I do because I want to get recognized or I need the attention. I, sure. But it, it's to be able to walk into a pen show or something like that and have you, someone come up and say, hey, I really like what you do. I watch your stuff. Then that's just kind of an affirmation that, hey, I, I'm, I'm doing good work or I, I'm so are, putting something out there that's entertaining. And that that's a lot of fun. Are you getting recognized at pen shows and stuff as you go yeah. to it? And yeah. And, and that's a lot of fun because yeah. I, like I said, I, it's not that I need to get recognized. I'm not like you walk in going, hey, I'm here. Sure. But um, if someone can come up and, and I would think that, okay, I've been on the other side before where maybe I wanted to approach someone and I know that, okay, it must, they must mean something to you in order to want to come up. Sure. And you want to create content or create something that will make people want to do that. Yeah. It's kind of a leading indicator, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, exactly. It's like validating towards, because most yeah. of the time you're sitting in a room trying to keep your family and your dog quiet. <laughs> yes. Shooting and talking into a camera for hours. And you're like, I hope that this is a value to somebody because, oh, you know, yeah. like you do it out of your own kind of interest. But I think my um, first, I, I think my first four videos I, I got like a total of like 20 views. Like, oh yeah. Oh, like over your first four. And <laughs> I, I um, one of the things I, I recommended to folks is like, maybe don't try to like promote yourself right away. Right. Like, you're, you're going to stink off the bat. Oh, you're sure. going to be terrible. Oh yeah. And, and so, you know what? Use that time when no one knows you're, knows you're around to like perfect like, your craft. Figure it out. Yeah. For, and oh, that sure. I've always been a thing of, it, don't worry about bringing things to bringing people to you as much because if you create good content, people will find you. Bingo. Because like if I've been searching around and found someone that has good content, I'm on it. I'll tell people about it. Things yeah. like that. And so if you create good content, well, you want to market yourself appropriately. You don't need to over market yourself. You exactly. know, you, someone puts out one video and then they post everywhere. Hey, I'm putting out videos. No, maybe put out a couple before we start watching. Yeah. So. Um, but you create good content, people will watch. You have a good company, agree. have good customer service, then people are gonna recognize that and people are gonna be happy. That's kind of the approach we've taken ever since the beginning here. I, unlike you, I had no real interest or background in video whatsoever. Yeah. I purely saw it as, you know, I looked at Gary Vaynerchuk from Wine Library and what he did with the wine world, he was doing vlogging and reviewing and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I saw that that could be a benefit in the fountain pen community. And it was so I had to like completely figure it out. I knew nothing about video. And that's very evident in my first <laughs> video because my first are terrible. Yeah. I mean, I was like hand holding, like shooting it up my nose. It was all shaky. I didn't even know how to cut video. So I would like do a face shot and then like turn around and fumble it around <laughs> and put it on the tripod and then shoot it from the hands. I mean, it was terrible, but 
You learn over time. Oh yeah. Right? My first videos, uh, I had no, I think I've always been a proponent of work with what you have oh, yeah. to begin with. Oh, yeah. Don't go out and spend hundreds of dollars on equipment. No, uh, no your like, cell phone camera, good enough. For sure. Uh, you know, things like that. The, you know, get, sit next to a window. You don't need lights. Just right. get that practice down. Make sure it's something you enjoy yeah. doing before you invest. But yeah, my first videos, I, I was next to a window. So then you could only shoot like during the morning, yep. on the weekends. And the light has very, to be just right. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah very sure. limited to what you were doing. Yeah. And uh, that I was using a mic on the camera. And, yeah. yeah. But then it after a while, it doesn't take much. You know, you could buy a good lava mic for like 20 bucks. Right. You know, that improves your audio considerably. Exactly. Um, that, you know, like I said, you can use your camera phone. Those are as good as a lot of camcorders I mean, on the market. The smartphones now oh, have yeah. cameras that are, you know, 4K and all this craziness that yeah. are beyond. I mean, the first camera, I didn't, I didn't even have a smartphone yeah. when I first started shooting videos. I didn't get a smartphone until like 2013 or something like that. I was pretty yeah. late to the game in that respect. Um, but I had a cam, I had a video, a pretty decent video camera that we got because my son uh, was being born. And so like we got a nice camera because that's what you do when you have kids. You like want to record those memories yeah. and stuff. Um, but then I ended up using that camera more for, <laughs> for the business than I did for our kids. Uh, I still drop plenty with the kids, believe me. But um, yeah. Yeah, and, and then don't things like hold you back. Yeah. and then things like lights uh, that really make a video look um, a lot more professional. Yeah, um, that a good set of lights, you know, it can be like fifty bucks. It doesn't need to be expensive. You could it's find true. like a good set of photo you know photography you lights. Yeah, I'll show you exactly what you need because I have it right over here. <laughs> this is about as basic as you can get. You buy a can light that from Home Depot. That's like twelve yep. bucks for a big one. It's like eight bucks for a small one. Throw a daylight. Compact yep. fluorescent bulb in there, and then I just oh, as a diffuser, is that your diffuser? A yeah, paper towel for your most diff makeshift <laughs> diffuser that you can get. You throw a paper towel over top of it, just something to oh, not have yeah. harsh light. You can use a bed sheet, you can use a pillowcase, yeah, whatever, and you can just clip this to a chair or whatever that you have handy, uh -huh. position it so that it gets you some light on your face, and, uh, and it will make shape. your video like look that much more professional. Hundred percent. Um, for a very inexpensive cost. Exactly. A very, uh, very low cost in order to turn that around. So those exactly. are, so those are some of the investments. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars on equipment. Oh goodness, no. Yes, can you buy a very expensive camera? Yes, but I, the. I think for the most part, people are looking for content over the quality. Exactly. I mean, you, you want it. You want to pay attention to it. Yeah. To where you know, I've seen things you don't where want to be distracting. No, I've seen things where you could see the bathroom in the back, or they're in their bedroom and the bed isn't made, or sure. you could see the kitchen in the bed. It's just like you want to pay attention to how things look so that it's not distracting. But for the most part, it's content. Are you engaging? Exactly. Can you at least hold a conversation and, mm -hmm. and, and get the points across and be interesting to listen to for 10 or 15 minutes about a pen? Right. Which, if you would have told me a number of years ago, I'd be talking about, you know, 20 minutes about a pen, I, I probably was, I wouldn't have been able to say I'd do that. But, for sure. But, yeah, sometimes I have to limit myself. But because you want to, is someone really going to sit down there for 25 <laughs> minutes and listen to you talk about a specific pen? Sometimes they will. But you want to be engaging enough to where you're making it entertaining to listen to. And you kind of think, okay, would I like to watch this? Would I yeah. find this entertaining? And you always want to try to get better as well. Yeah. So I always try to refine and get better. So you have, I mean, what does your pen collection look like now? How many pens do you have? What what makes up the bulk of your collection? <sighs> you know, I, I have about like a little over 200, 220. And then maybe That's about... That's a fair number of pens. Um, maybe about 130 inks as well. Okay. And it's one of those things when I first got started, my very first pen was a, a, a Lamy uh, All-Star. Okay. Uh, I had a friend from work who well, that basically had an All-Star or maybe even had a Safari. I can't remember exactly which one he had, yeah. but he says, hey, you should try this. It's a fountain pen. You might think it's cool. He was uh, kind of a, a geek like me. And, okay. so, and so I was like, you know what? It's different. Yeah. I kind of like being different. Right. And, uh, and so I, I ordered it from one of your competitors, sorry, but it was like, okay. it, it was the only site I even knew existed. Gotcha. And for the longest time, it was like I was, I, I had blinders. I didn't realize how big the world was. Right. And that I used that, that, uh, that all-star for a while. I mean, for like almost three years. Wow. And Just that pen. Ju uh, I, you know what? I went on, we went on a trip to Paris and I bought a, uh, a, a, a safari 
while okay. I was on that trip. So I had those, and I had a, an old Urban, a Parker Urban that okay. someone gave me. Yep, and yep. I used those pens for probably almost three or four years, and I was happy. Nice. I, I was happy. Yeah. And then, I don't know what yeah, clicked I was one say, day. What, what changed, yeah. what changed what that all of a sudden? What changed is, is I thought maybe there's other pens out there. Okay. And so then... I, I started looking at I, the, the question that everyone has is, what do I buy? Right. What, what on earth? There's so many choices. For sure. And so I would start to devour like every top 10, top five list and just try to figure out what is it I should even go and buy. Okay. And what it led me to was actually a pen that you guys sell, which is okay. this Twisby Diamond 580. Nice. And I, I purchased this pen. And I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. They are pretty dang cool. Um, I mean, it's a clear demonstrator. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that you could use bottled ink in it and mm -hmm. see the ink sloshing around. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's actually a fairly large pen, especially if you post it. Yeah, it's but, pretty long. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, it, cost wise, it's not that expensive. It's I good, mean, it's good value for what it is. Oh, absolutely. I mean, for features and quality and everything. I mean, at the time, I couldn't believe I was spending, you know, $60 on a pen. That, that just seemed... I mean, to a, to a non, yeah. like, super deep into the fountain pen world person, that's, that's a lot of money for a pen. Yes. And then once I got this and realized how cool this was, the very dangerous question came into my mind, if this is so cool... What else what is out there? <laughs> what other cool things are there? Yep. And so then you go on that acquisition phase to where you are... Try, try, trying trying everything. Yeah. Yeah. And so I have a lot of everything that you try because right. you're not quite sure about your taste. What, what were you trying in those kind of early days? What were some of the like... Oh, uh, just about anything. I mean, I would try a lot of the Kavecos and the Lamis, a lot of the Twisbees, but mm -hmm. then, um, you know, other things like Stipulas and... Then I started getting in. Then you kind of kind of step your way up, right. and then you kind of move into that different level, and then you move into some of the Lamis, the more expensive Lamis. Mm -hmm. And I remember I had a studio that I used for quite some time. That yeah. was like the that was like the next step of a, that yeah. was like the most expensive pen I had for quite some time. Okay, was a, a studio. I still like that clip. The clip is one of the it's cooler cool. clips. It's cool. Um, and uh, and then I kind of just went off the deep end. <laughs> Uh, and like what time frame are we talking about here? Oh, it started to happen because you had like three years. Oh, yeah You're happy with a couple of pens then you start to explore a little bit. Yeah, what time frame? Are we talking with, a within of a months? year and within because a year. okay an interesting video I have is one of my my first if you go back in my videos my very first top 10 list um, I, I broke it out by months Okay. Because I was in, I was acquiring so many pens. It was, it was actually I think it's a pretty interesting video because the very I go through it's either three or four top ten lists because it was like okay, this is where I started and this was my top ten and it's almost like a top ten of beginner pens. Okay. And then, um, then like three or four months later, now I kind of have a little more intermediate pens. Yeah, yeah. And then three to four months later, I kind of have, and so you can kind of see a progression of. Uh, of how at least I my collection grew over That's time, cool. but then it seems like your your ta your tastes become more refined and you more expensive, uh, and then <laughs> right. it seems like each year now that I come out with the top ten list, you know, there's only maybe like three or four carryovers and the rest mm, are new. I got you. But I think over time, then you you learn to refine your taste and you understand what you like okay. more, and that you'll have a good idea if you're going to like this pen before you even get it. Yeah. For the most part, um, because there's not too many times you buy, or at least I buy an expensive pen that's like a clunker that you know you get and you. And I really don't care for this, but okay. but I, I think over time, then you know it takes a little bit more to get you excited. But uh, I can definitely attest to that fact. Like the things you get excited about are more obscure, or oh, just yeah. like it's just you haven't seen it before, and that's why it's interesting. But uh, that is interesting. So when you do a top ten list, you you like evaluate everything you have and come up with a top 10. It's not just like top 10 of the newest things that are on your radar. Or... You know what? I've done, uh, I've done them different each year. Okay. So like this past I usually do my top 10 right at the end of December. And this past top 10 list was just my top 10 in my collection. Okay. Um, the one I did the year before, I actually broke it down by price and I did like four different ones and it was top 10 pens under $50, top 10s 50 to a hundred, okay. hundred to 200. And then, 200 and above because nice. you're really talking about different things. You know, I, 
if you're talking about the whole collection, are you really going to rank this Twisby ahead of one of the Nakayas or something like that? Right. Uh, no, but if you're talking about the top 10 pens under 50 bu or under $100, uh, this definitely makes the list. Mm -hmm. So you're really talking about apples and oranges. Gotcha. So, um, I, you know, I try to do something a little different each year. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next year, but um, this past one was like my my top 10 favorite. And okay. You, you want you don't want it just to be a, a video of hey everyone here's you know showing off these are ten pens that I really love in my collection that you want to have some substance behind it and education as well. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of right there with you. I try to mix in like entertainment and education together, edutainment if you will, yeah. as I've heard the term used. Well, because I know if I'm looking to buy a pen, especially in those days. You know, if I'm looking to buy this Twisby, I'm going to go right. out and try to find every video I can on this Twisby right. and learn about as it before detailed I... detailed a review as you can possibly oh, find yeah. and all that. And, and and do that before I... So I can make an educated purchase. Yeah. So I, I try to to provide that information mm -hmm. and then also try to provide... I, I try to provide a lot of background information on the company, how things get their names. Yeah, you research really deeply, like more so than even I do sometimes, which, you know, I'm a little jealous of. Like, you'll, you'll tell me about things and I'm like, oh, I don't even know that. <laughs> I probably should have known that, you know, but you, you do a really good job of researching deeply. Well, thanks. Well, I was saying that um, one of the things that I, I really had an aha moment is the, the Lamy 2000. And okay. I, I brought a number, some of my favorite pens that you carry. And oh, I appreciate that. that. Um, <laughs> Give you some shameless plugs here. Yeah. And then um, <laughs> well, the Lamy 2000 This is an example well. of like how thoughtful you are. Like you were thinking, hey, I'm stopping through here. We're going to do a video together. And you like went through your whole collection and picked out pens that you thought would be good to show to our audience. Yeah. So that's really, that's an example of how thoughtful you are. Well, thanks. Stuff. Well, I didn't want to come here and say, hey, he, these are all these pens that are fantastic that now you have to go to your, one of your competitors in order You're to like, purchase uh, it. We can't get that <laughs> one, uh, you know. <laughs> so one of the, my favorite things that I, um, I discovered about the Lamy 2000 is, first of all, it's just an amazing pen. I mean, for the price, it's, one it's, of, a, it's, it's classic. It's one of my tops, for sure. Um, and that you you don't look at this pen and think that it's 50 years old. I mean, they, they could just have come it out It looks with like it's a newly designed pen. Absolutely, yeah. which is amazing. But the gentleman who designed this pen, um, before he came to Lamy, worked for the shaving company Braun. Mm -hmm. And that he uh, was famous for Braun for designing this specific shaver. Um, and I, I can't remember the exact name of what the shaver was, but when I saw that he designed the shaver, then I kind of looked it up on the internet to see the shaver. The shaver looks exactly like this Lamy 2000. Mm. It's, and once I saw it, I recognized it, but it has a black body, and then the, the head of the shaver is this silver. And you're like, you look at it and you're like, yeah, the same guy designed this. It's the same pen, <laughs> yeah. or it's the same design. And it looked fantastic, but that was one of those aha moments of, okay, what can I say in a review that no one else has said about that pen before. Sure. Especially when there's a hundred Lamy 2000 reviews out there. Yeah. What they can don't you mention that, yeah. one of which is mine. <laughs> what, what can you find that's interesting sure. and different? So I, you know, I try to add some close-up photography, some, uh, mm -hmm. some microscope shots. I have a little microscope that I can get in there. Oh, and cool. sometimes okay. it's interesting to see that. And, yeah. you know, there, there's other posts like, Think, like Matt Armstrong has fantastic video quality. Sure. I, I'm not going to beat that. He's, right. His video, his production quality is... He's is, definitely is, a gear junkie. Oh, I, yeah. Him and I email all the time. Like, I'm shopping for a new camera right now, and one of the ones I'm looking at is literally the camera that he just bought. And he yeah. went to the Arkansas show, and he's vlogging and doing that. And so I'm asking, I'm emailing all these questions, oh, yeah. and I'm like, hey, how did it do in low light? How's, it, you know, how's the macro in this? Which lenses do you have? So <laughs> I mean, for he, that. he has a whole studio set up, and I'm not going to beat that. Right. But then you're like, okay, what can I do? That I'm going to say that he can't or other people can't, but what are my strengths? What's your yeah exactly? And exactly. because, like when I, when I first started, I was kind of like okay, at least as far as pen reviews, there's Matt and there's Steven, and as far as the top tier, right? And I was like okay, could I at least get in the conversation? Could I at least work <laughs> up to where at least when people are talking about reviewers, I at least am in the conversation. I was going to say, what does that look like to you? Is that just like a feeling you have, or is that like a certain number of subscribers, or view count, or video count, or where? Yeah, where, it's where a, is that? It's a little bit of everything. You. Okay. you know, sometimes it's uh, you know it's subscribers. I, I'm closing in almost ten thousand. Not as nice, much as a hundred thousand, nice but uh, maybe in about in about a month or two, I might hit ten thousand. And, nice, and congratulations! That you know, it is nice affirmation to where you post a video and that people watch right away. Yeah, because you know they get the notifications. Because you can have all the subscribers in the world, but if people aren't actually watching your videos, oh yeah, who cares, right? Um, I, I try to stay engaged as far as uh, replying to comments and things like that. That's um, really good. 
so that, um, you know, if someone's taking the time to watch my video and ask a question, that I, I try to, to respond to that and then kind of engage with the community. Um, and then again, that's part of the hobby. Yeah. And that you build friendships and you build relationships and you never know what might come of it. Because, you know, one of these days I, I might decide to make a product of my own or something along those lines. And that maybe the work I'm doing now will help that succeed or at least, well, obviously you want to create a good product. But right. if I do decide to do something like that, then, you know, that it, the help building, helping the, this builds on that. Nice. So like five years from now when you have your own pen or something like yeah. that, we can go back and reference this video and be like, that, ah, the seed of the idea right here. <laughs> yes, or something along those lines. Because I, again, I think at that point, it's almost an extension of the hobby as far as, okay, I enjoy yeah. doing this because I, I think that I've really enjoyed creating and that there's mm. something satisfying about you know, my videos are a hundred percent me. Yeah. Now that you know, and your videos are a hundred percent you. Well, not hundred. You have some video. Yeah, I was gonna say Andy now is helping out quite yes. a bit. You know, we've had a videographer for. A but for the of most years. part, it is you. Yeah. And that um, you know, it's something you created with your own hands, and that there's something satisfying about that. Yeah. You want to consume, but for then sure. it's also satisfying to produce. Absolutely, I totally get that. I totally get that. And for me now too, it's like. It's gone even beyond that because, of course, with everything I have going on here, there's a whole team involved now in helping to plan videos and come up with ideas, and Colin helps respond to comments on YouTube, and Andy's helping to edit and all that, shoot and all that kind of stuff. So that's a whole other experience, though, yeah. which is cool because sometimes I'll come up with ideas, and sometimes other people will come up with ideas, and I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I never thought of that. You know, like the one that we just put out, the Seven Fountain Pen Myths, yeah. uh, which was a lot of fun. I really had... That was like off the wall for me. How was the lighting to do with the candle? It was candle? just a candle right yeah. in front of my, it was, I had to hold it in a very precise place. And Andy was there shooting. We're like in our quiet room over here. It's pitch black in the room. And I'm holding this candle like in this very specific place in front of my face. Otherwise it would look really different. I wondered so if I it was in here it. or else. No, it was in, it was in our quiet room. Yeah. And so I'm sitting in there and I'm, and all, literally all the prep we did for that video was we had like seven bullet points of kind of what we wanted to cover just of what the myths were yeah and everything else I just kind of made up on the fly and so it was like me in there and I'm kind of making stuff up and Andy's like nah that sounds kind of weird can you say this or say that a little lower and she she made sure that I was like very consistent in my voice throughout the whole video because I kept kind of going into like Brian mode yeah kind of like talking like this and she's like that's not the that's not the feel of the video and so I had to kind of have the voice and you know and yeah. stay like and I felt like so weird doing that but, but you had fun right oh my gosh I think we're gonna end up doing an entire video just of outtakes <laughs> from that video because no joke it was like maybe five percent of it was usable of what you saw and the rest of it was me saying ridiculous things or laughing or yeah. you know just making things up that just did not work you know like the wax museum curators that was one thing <laughs> I was just like you know there's like a lot of footage I'm like what's an obscure profession that fits the vibe of this video and that was like what came to mind i was like that's pretty weird but go figure um, so you just get to have fun with it you know and i get what you're saying about creating is you get to do just interesting things that are not part of like your normal day job yeah right? I, like I've had, I, last year I got to sit down with Neil deGrasse Tyson for an interview. Yeah. And that, which is I, super cool by oh, the way. I, it was amazing. <laughs> and I, I had a spectacular time, but if you had told me that I'd be going out and interviewing people and doing things like that, right. I, I wouldn't have thought that that was possible, but it, it was a lot of fun. And I did it more, not because I wanted to get a bunch of views or something like that. It was more like, I think it would be a lot of fun to first of all, try to contact somebody to I, it took months to coordinate. Yeah, I was and, gonna say that's not something like he's a busy guy. He's yeah. doing a lot. Well, and he's running TV shows. Yeah. And he's got like he's, he's running, running a, whole, a museum. Yeah, that's crazy. And uh, you know, and then why would someone sit down with me? Why would someone sit down on a YouTube channel for especially at events? the time you had what yeah. like two thousand subscribers? Yeah, like, you were relatively yeah. small. Like I, I had a lot less, and that it would. Why would someone sit down and then that it would it would be just a fun project to literally have to travel to New York, take all my equipment with me, you know, set up in his office, and and then get come up with an interview and and make it coherent. Yeah, and, Which and you did a great job on that. Well, by thanks. The way. It was and, very and entertaining to watch. I, I thought it. I thought it, I was happy with the way it turned out. Now he was very easy to deal with. It was. Yeah. I knew he would not be a hard interview. Yeah. You basically just have to throw him a question. It's like riding a bike. Yeah. yeah. He, he's he's done a few interviews at this point. <laughs> if if anyone was going to screw up, it was me. <laughs> Okay, right. because my whole concern during the entire thing was, um, 
um, is my equipment working? Yeah. Did I remember to turn the mic on? Yeah. Are oh. the audio levels okay? You oh, know? absolutely. <laughs> and at one point near the beginning of the interview, you share me looking like right at the camera for a second. And in, if you want, you could hear what's going on in my mind. It's like, is that red light on? Is that red right. light on? Am I recording this right now? Is my, uh, you know, is my microphone on? I actually, I, for a second, I like, is my microphone even on? And I actually went down and like, check my lava mic by, <laughs> by insert another shot so you can't see it but that's nice. like my concern it was I, I was enough I was present enough to be able to talk but that was my I didn't want to walk out and then get near the elevator and look at my video and have there be no audio or something right. because there was no take two there was For no sure. take two I was in kind of I've done that a number of times too like doing doing something like this like we're here I'm in my home element it's pretty easy we have all of our equipment here but traveling and shooting is a whole different ball game yes yeah. Um, when I, I did a similar situation, not as big of a celebrity, uh, but uh, when I interviewed Jake Weidman, yeah. who is, he's the one who did this artwork right here. There we go. He's kind of talented. He's, oh, he's got a little bit of talent. Yeah. But he was like, I mean, I fanboyed out more with him than I have probably with anybody else I've ever met. And, and uh, I've just been following him for a number of years and now we're like good friends and everything, which is pretty cool. But um, I went to interview him. It was at the DC show last year. Yeah. And uh, he was working with Monograppa. He was going to be engraving some pens mm -hmm. at the show. And they were like, hey, maybe we can get together and you two can do an interview. And I was like, that would be great because um, we sell Monograppa. And so they made us that connection. And I was like, that'd be amazing. Because I'd emailed Jake before, but he's a busy guy and I just yeah. never connected. Um, but I met him and I thought I was going to get to interview him on Sunday morning. So I came on Friday afternoon for the show. I yeah. thought it was going to be Sunday morning. But instead, as soon as I met him, we hugged and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then they were like, hey, you know what? It's going to work better in our schedule. Can we actually do the interview tonight before we go out to dinner in like 45 <laughs> minutes? And I was like, uh, I didn't got my room yet. And I had all my equipment. And I was like, okay. So we went back to our hotel room. And I specifically asked for a north facing window in my hotel room so we could get that beautiful natural light yep. because I didn't have the ability to haul lights anywhere. And I set up like two cameras and everything. And then I had like all my microphones, like we have a, a Zoom mic here. Yeah. And I forgot the SD cards for the Zoom <laughs> mic. And I was like, I can't record the audio. So I had to record it straight into the camera. And actually yep. the, the audio I used for that was just straight off my iPhone. That oh. was the best because I set up my phone as like a, just a, if everything else goes to heck, yeah. I'll have a phone recording of this interview. But it was like the whole time during that. And I, had, I didn't have any questions prepared because I was like, oh. I thought we were going to have dinner on Friday night. And then I would come up with questions on Saturday and then we'd interview Sunday morning. So I'm like scrambling in 45 minutes to go up to my room, set up the equipment, make sure that everything's good, come up with some questions with this guy that I like idolized. Yep. And then we sit down together and we're like trying to, to figure it out. And it was just like, oh. it's a lot to think about. And the whole time you're thinking like, you know, the sun is the light changing. Is oh the, yeah. Is the camera good? Am I sitting too close to him? Does it look weird? Am I smiling? Am I, you know, it's a lot to think about. Yeah, it'd be nice to basically have other people think about that for you, where you just sit down and be the just talent, do so to speak. Exactly. But, um, you know, I, 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 I'm trying to do more interviews that I, uh, doing more interviews with pen folks as well, to okay. where I, I sat down with Ryan Krusek, uh cool. a couple of months ago and talk about someone with talent yeah um and that i i have a few other ones set up especially for pen shows that's a good time to to catch some of these folks and for so sure. i'm gonna try to do that and i'm trying to work on a few other we'll just say celebrity type interviews okay um there's a couple that i've been literally working on for like a year and a half and i thought it was very close to happening a couple of months ago or actually last month uh but then a travel schedule got in the way and so uh. it it I, i'm I'm confident that it might happen later this year, but we will have to see. But uh, wow. um, I think that that one's going to be very exciting. I don't want to jinx it, not to just tease <laughs> right. you. Right? You don't want to have to back down after yes. committing to something. But oh yeah, I, I bet, like when I did Mr. Tyson, I, I only told like two or three people. I told yeah. you and a couple other people yeah. because I did not want anything to go wrong. And right. then they're like, "And where's that interview, buddy?" Yeah, you know? and then we get razzed on it for not having it happen the whole time. Yeah, but yeah. I, I. I you know, I don't know. I had to share it with someone. I couldn't right, just keep of it to course, myself. Of <laughs> I get that. So, but uh, but that that stuff's fun. Yeah. And and doing things like that is fun and challenging and different. And that's what kind of keeps it interesting. And that, you know, if I create good content, then then that's good. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Fun. So now you know if you're interested in creating any content, David's a good guy to reach out to <laughs> because he's super interested in that kind of stuff. And you're very helpful and you're very 
positive about it all too. So, did you want to talk any more about pens? I mean, you brought all these different yeah, pens here. I, I kind of brought some of my, like I said, some of my favorite pens that uh, that you guys sell. Oh, you know what? One I wanted to mention, just because I like this pen so much, um, and I typically like larger pens, but uh, but this is a small pen that I really like. Yeah. Uh, and this is the uh, what, the Stargazer. Stargazer in the U.S. called the Stella not what 90s or whatever. Yeah, 90s. Yeah. Um, that this is a, a fantastic pen from Pilot. Um, it has a gold nib. Uh, that it, it writes very well. Uh, this is a desk or a pen that I keep on my desk a lot. Uh, and it's one that you can just grab and use and I really enjoy it. And I'm just a little disappointed because they've discontinued it. Yeah. Uh, now they might have a lot of inventory that they're selling still, but I think they do. There's, there's quite a few in the US, so it'll be little, it's not like it's gonna be gone in two weeks. They'll be yes. around for a little bit. Um, um, but if you like smaller pens, uh, even if you like larger pens, this one is very much worth it. And, and I, it, first of all, it looks cool and then it performs very well. Uh, and uh, it's one of the smaller pens that I really like. I, I think I'm going to be doing a video in the next couple of weeks um, about small pens, which is a little contrary for me because it seems like my tastes have grown to where I like larger pens. Sure. But I, I see I think you got a number that, of like long, heavy pens in yes, here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Most of my pens I have are, are very large and big, but there's some very sm the small ones that are very much worthwhile. Yeah. But that's definitely one cool. that I enjoy. Cool. Um, another small pen that. You don't necessarily realize how small it is, even when you're using it, but it's really nice, is the Aurora Optima. Mm -hmm. um, that it, it seems larger, it, it, you, when you're using it, it seems a lot larger than it really is, until I compared it to some of my small pens, because when I was going through kind of saying, okay, which are some of my small pens I like, I'm kind of like, oh, wait a second, this one is kind of small, but it mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily feel like it. Gotcha. Um, again, the nibs are fantastic. Um, it has a nice ink window on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I do find it's kind of funny that the clear demonstrator still has the ink window. <laughs> have, you, have you noticed that? that so when they, they make a clear demonstrator model and basically when they make it that just everything is clear. Yeah, they just make a resin body that's yeah. clear instead. Yeah, and they don't have clear to redesign section, the whole pen, but yeah. But they, they still have the, you know, the whole thing is an ink window, but it still has the ink window on it, which is sure. just kind of funny. Sure. Um, but the Aurora Optima is another one that I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, one that is very polarizing, that I realize that it's mm. not for everyone, is this Lamy Dialogue 3. Uh, that, first of all, it just has a retractable nib, which is cool. Which is just cool. Yeah. Yes. Because it's interesting. It's different. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And then you really can't see it, but when you retract <laughs> the nib, the clip actually kind of uh, hugs the uh, the body a little bit more and kind of retracts into the body a little bit. And that's to, like, just get in the, less in the way of your fingers. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it doesn't have a traditional grip. That's what most people don't like about it, or it doesn't have a traditional section. Mm -hmm. and, and so for some people, it can be a little uncomfortable because they don't sure. care for that. Um, so like a vanishing point, some people don't care for having mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. clip here on the front. Yeah. Um, I have a friend who actually does uh, clip ep clip ectomies. Clip ectomies on the yeah. vanishing points. Yeah, yeah she I've takes off the those, vanishing yeah. points or the vanishing point clips, and but I, I don't mind it. It, it kind of helps guide your hand. It's never gotten in the way for me personally. Yeah, and actually, you know, because we we sell a lot of these pens, and um, specifically with the vanishing point, uh, you would think that it would get in the way of a lot more people. A lot of people buy it, and they're like, I don't know how I'm gonna like it, but. It's actually, people think it's going to get more in the way than it actually does. So. Yeah. I mean, that's, in a way, it helps you guide yourself so that you're holding it the right way. Mm -hmm. Especially when you don't necessarily have anything within the section. It's not like, you know, a, a, a Lamy or a Twisby grip that's triangular that's forcing you into right. a specific grip. Yeah. Um, another one of my favorite pens that you sell, and this is one of my, my favorite pens in my collection, just because it's tied to a lot of good memories, is mm -hmm. this uh, Visconti Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. And this one is the Irises mm -hmm. model. And it's gorgeous. I, I think one, I think it's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, and it performs very well. Um, and I, I've told the story in my videos, but I, I grew up in San Diego in Southern California, and Irises is actually housed at the Getty in Los mm -hmm. Angeles, mm -hmm. which is, uh, a, if you're ever in Los Angeles area, the Getty is very much a, a very nice museum to visit yes. and very cool. Bit of a pain to get to. Yes. But it's worth the trip. You got to park and then get in the tram and then you get gotta, the tram You got to make top. it, I've been to the Getty. Yeah. You got to make like a full day trip out of it. I made the mistake of trying to squeeze it in in like a half day, yeah. which of course on a Friday afternoon was most of the time in traffic. Yep. I got to took the tram. By the time I got up there, I literally had about 30 minutes of the Getty and then I had to leave. 
And then, <laughs> I, you know, you pay for parking, but it's free. It's a free museum to get yeah. into. It's like 20 bucks for parking. It's not anything terrible. Yeah. You know. Um, and, and they have, uh, like, one of my favorite Rembrandts they have there. Uh, they have... Uh, 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 a painting by Knopf. I forgot uh, the, the, the one of my favorite paintings there. But they have irises, which nice. is my favorite Van Gogh painting, nice. which this is based off of. And I, it's a fantastic representation of the painting. They do a good job. Uh, and so I, I would take many trips to the Getty uh, and and have very fond memories of, of going to that museum. And so that uh, this pen really reminds me of my time in Southern California and the time of going to that museum. So, um, you know, any pen that you could tie to a memory or any object you could tie to a memory, it just makes cool. it that much more special. Yeah. You know, it's not just a pen. It's my it's my Van Gogh Iris's pen, which yeah. means that much more to me. So that is cool. um, it's a good pen, but then I, I also enjoy the story behind it and, well, it and what it means. Think, it makes me. you think of that every time you look at the pen. Yeah, so cool. absolutely. Okay. What else you got that you like? Um you know, this is another Visconti, which mm -hmm. is the Davina, mm -hmm. which I believe that you have in one of the colors now. Yeah, the, the Davina, yeah, they, they kind of come and go in their regularity, but the, we have the, um, oh my gosh. It's, was it it's the brown one here. or is it the green one? Yes, yeah, it's the, the, the brown one. Yeah, it's the, we've had the green is one. The, I don't, I don't oh know if gosh. they call it the mocha or something. Or no, <laughs> I'm failing to remember yeah. right now. The brown one. They have the brown one. <laughs> Davina uh, Elegance. Oh, one. okay. Um, and... I think this is one of those pens that just has a high cool factor. Um, there are certain pens that maybe people won't notice and that don't necessarily stand out. Mm -hmm. You know, you go into a meeting at work and no one, you know, no one really it's like, notices. Oh, it's another cares. black pen with gold yeah. trim, you know. Um, but if you pull this out, you're going to get people saying, "Oh, what is that?" or right. "What's this thing?" or yeah. people will, will reach over and want to pick it up, you know. Or <laughs> I'll be sitting in a meeting I have it sitting here, and the person next to me grabs it and you know does something. Yeah, keep an eye on them because they, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's an expensive pen. Have it walk away. Um, but the design is very cool, um, and that. You know, when Visconti's uh, work right, they work fantastic. Yeah. Um, and the, the nibs are very nice to use and, uh, and and perform very well. It has a unique filling system, mm -hmm. kind of the plunger system, yeah, where you, or pull, actually you pull, pull it out, it out and, twist and then it. twist. Yeah, it's cool. Um, and they, they have other ones that have varying systems. Sometimes have more of a piston to Yeah, some of like the special editions and limited editions they've done, they've done different like plunger and mm -hmm. different types of things in there. It has a unique capping system. They're, they call it their hook safe system. And that is my favorite. I love the cap. Yeah. Um, I, I like the hook safe, which is the same that is on the Homo mm -hmm. sapiens, which is another one that I have. Mm -hmm. um, now this one here, you might notice something a little bit different about it is because the one nowadays just have one set of rings and this has two sets of rings. This is one of their earlier models. Oh, and this was a, a sterling silver. Uh -huh. model that they had. I guess it, they sold it um, as a set with a, a fountain pen and a, and a ball point or a okay. roller ball. And then uh, the set was broken up and then I, I purchased this. Um, nice. But the, you could purchase the ones without the second ring on it. That's pretty cool, man. Um, and So where did you get this thing then? Because I've you, uh, this you was must have gotten this. At, this was from one of your competitors. Uh, so, um, is it like new old stock? Because I haven't. Yeah, seen it, it was a yeah, it was okay. a it was a new old stock from a couple of years ago. Gotcha. Um, and they, I, I just the 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 way that this lava rock feels. Oh yeah. Is very cool. Oh, 100%. And just to say that it's you know now it's a it's a lava rock and resin combination. Right. Uh, lava rock itself is porous. It's very porous. Yeah. yeah. So that the would ink not would be bleed good. right through the pen. Yes. You know. Um, but it is, um, again, I like things with high cool factors, at least what I think is cool. Oh, yeah. And having a, a pen made out of lava rock is, is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. And, um, and then I just really like the looks of it. Now, you, you, know, you do have to, it does get tarnished, and so you do have to polish it mm -hmm. um, from yeah, time to time. Yeah, it's real silver, yeah, for sure. Yes, but I, I, I really enjoy using this. I have a Dark Ages as well, okay. um, but, I, uh, uh, but I enjoy this silver. And then I kind of like that it's different and that it's, a little bit different the two than sets of rings. Yeah, yeah, the two sets carry, of rings. Because I have the bronze one, which I like the tarnishing of the bronze. I, ne yeah. I never polish mine. I like the tarnish. But it's uh, it's been my daily carry for a while. Uh, but mine's only got the one set of rings, so now I'm yep. like super jealous. So it's just something different. I think that's... Yeah. I, I was looking to purchase one, and I saw this, and it was at a decent price. I'm like, you know what? I kind of like things that are a little different, and so that was a little <laughs> bit different. Um, but that's they cool. perform very nice, and... Um, and for a lot of people, this is a grail pen, and I can understand it. It's worth sure. of that. I was going to say, like, I was about to ask, because it is 
talked about as a grail pen. A lot of people think when something's hyped up that much, is it really worth it? Because it's a not an inexpensive yeah. pen. Um, I, I feel it is. That, um, that with Visconti, sometimes you might need to get um, some of the nibs worked on. You might need to get it adjusted to fit yeah. your personal taste. Right. Um, but outside of that, it's a fantastic pen. They do a good job with their design. I love the clip. Some, there's some people yeah. that like it more than others. Uh, I, I really enjoy it. Yeah. it it's kind of neat that you, you operate it different than you do any other clip. Mm. Uh, any other clip, you really don't have to use your hand with it. You just slip it in your pocket or right. something like this. But with this, you kind of literally just grab it and squeeze. And when you kind of just squeeze with your hand, then... Yeah, it, and then you just drop it in your pocket. Yeah. So uh, there's just a lot different about this pen that mm -hmm. I like that's unique. Um, but uh, but I enjoy all the variants of this. See, I've been carrying mine around for a while. Mine is actually a little shinier and a little slicker yep. than, like, you can hold it. You can feel oh, yeah. that it's different. Like, I have so much hand oils that's in there now, and I never polish it or anything. So it, it's actually slickened up a little bit. And time. I think that's what's cool about this as well, is it becomes part of you. Yeah. And that your pen is going to look different than anybody else's. Yep. Uh, and the, so if you get greasy, and the, oily yeah. hands, you're going to get a The material pen. is, yeah, hygroscopic, <laughs> and it's going yeah. to absorb those materials, and it's going to be different. And this is uniquely you. And even I've seen new ones that look slightly different. They're not all the right. same look. Some yeah, are a little... it's a natural material. Yeah, you're some are a little more grayer and ashier than other ones, mm -hmm. and uh, they're all unique, but they're, they're fantastic. I love those. Cool. That is very cool. Um, let's see. I think I have two more. One that uh, I really like my Keras Customs ink. Okay. Uh, that again, it's something different. First of all, it's the heaviest pen that I own. This thing weighs a it's, ton. It's a really heavy uh, pen. Yeah. If you hand this to someone, their first look is like, what? You know, it's yeah. like, and you using this because this one is made <laughs> of um, uh, of the copper. And it, it and is extremely solid heavy. copper. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's heavy. Uh, they make other ones that are uh, much lighter. The other aluminums are considerably yeah. lighter. Um, but as far as a design for a pen, I, I enjoy it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a good design. Uh, and that uh, I actually kind of like it's that it's different as far as mm -hmm. the weight goes. For yeah. me, that's why I like using this is because, uh, you know, it's different because it, it is full copper. It is... Um, uh, a lot heavier and so yeah. just for a unique factor that's why I kind of like this pen is because it's unique in that regard and I see you've let the patina just go on this yeah you know, um, I is... let the patina go I really don't polish the the barrel at all but then you can see that the section is actually a little bit uh, a different color yeah um, that whether that's the oils or whether that's the moisture from inside the nib uh, with the ink that that I think that it's kind of interesting that it's two different colors mm -hmm. and it's gone naturally. That's just yeah. how, and this actually tarnished up pretty quick. It was like yeah. within like a week or two yeah. that had tarnished. And at first I was like, wait a second, why is this tarnishing so quick when this yeah. isn't? Because I almost expected the whole pen to do that. Right. But I kind of like that it's a little bit different. And I kind of like the outside a little more shiny and the inside is kind of old penny. I don't know if I would like it as much if it the whole definitely pen definitely looks old, old penny, yeah. yeah. If the whole pen was old penny, I might not like it as much. But mm. but but this is uh, any of the uh, the Keras Customs brands are, are extremely well made and functional. And again, something that someone who might not be a fountain pen lover, this would be a good... Um, fountain pen to get started with because it um, kind of has that industrial look to it. For sure. Because they're a bunch of machinists, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so it has a different, a distinct look and style to it. And I it kind does. of appreciate pens that don't look like any others. Yeah. You know, you, you pick this up, you know this is in your hand. You right. see this, you know it's a Keras oh, Custom There's no mistaking pen. that thing. Yeah, for sure. And then the, the last one I had um, is my Pilot 823, mm -hmm. which... Um, it's just a fantastic pen. Again, this is one Great that pen. a lot of people consider to be a grail pen. For sure. Uh, and the, um, uh, the it comes in a couple of different variants, but then uh, uh, do you care? Let's see. The, I think only the amber is available only in the U.S. Only amber is in the U.S. currently. Yeah. Um, and the, But they make a translucent one that is outside. A translu it's like grayish. Or, or Yeah, it's like a smoke. Yeah, it's smoke. It's like a dark gray, yeah. Um, but... Uh, it, it, it writes fantastic. Um, it's kind of unique in the fact that it's a, a vacuum filler and the uh, the nib is amazing on it. Some of the higher end pilot nibs and the higher end sailor nibs, like the mm -hmm. sailor king of pen nib mm -hmm. and this pilot nib are some of my absolute favorite in They're my very collection. Good. They're very good. Um, I, I just love these these uh, these nibs. I had Mike Matsuyama do some work on this nib. Oh, really? Okay, and, nice. Uh, what did he, he do to it? Um, the, when I got it, it just seemed like the flow wasn't necessarily uh, is. It seemed a little intermittent, and I wasn't quite mm. sure if it was more of the ink that I was using or more of the pen. I 
I have rarely had any issues with any pilot pen whatsoever. Yeah, that, that's that, pretty rare. And and so that's why I, I, I hesitate to mm. say, oh, I got something that wasn't quite working right because pilot does a very good job of their QA. Mm -hmm. um, and it just I just felt like it just wasn't quite right. And I actually okay. took it to one uh, to, to one Nibmeister and they worked on it for a while and and it did, still wasn't quite right. And then mm. I took it to Mike and the man is amazing. Mike is um, very talented, yeah. And and now it's fantastic. So I have a feeling that whatever wasn't quite right about it was a little difficult to find. But mm. I, I would consider that to be very unique and not the norm because... Yeah, I don't... I mean, we, we sell I, the A23 yeah. regularly and I really don't see that very often. But oh, yeah. obviously if you do bring it... You can always bring it to the retailer. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Or you bring it to the yeah, for sure. Um, but... I love this pen. It's amazing. It's one that, that you pick up even if it's just been sitting forever and it just writes. Yeah. Um, some pens, you know that, it, hey, I haven't used it for a week. I'm going to need to, you know, refill it or clean yeah. it or do something. But this is amazing. But I, I really like my, uh, my my Pilot 823. So nice. those were kind of like my top 10 pens. Cool. That I have in my collection that good, you could buy. A good collection, pens. yeah. Well, thank you for the plug. I appreciate that. But um, you know, you got clearly a lot of different pens, and a lot of a lot of these are kind of among my top as well. So I think we have similar tastes. Um, cool. But yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I appreciate you thinking about that and bringing those <laughs> here. Um, you know, we're pushing like an hour on the video. So oh, I we know, are. Yeah, oh. we could we could just go all day long. Oh, absolutely. You know, but. Um, as we close out here, you know, just do you have any impressions since, since you've gotten to see our physical space here, or just any impressions from your trip so far that you want to share with the, the well, audience? Well, you know, I did, I. I enjoy seeing small business and medium-sized business, and I'm more into like the operational side and analytical side of things. And so yeah. I'm always curious about not just what a company does, but how they do it. Yeah. And and so it's it's always interesting because you could always learn from companies, whether it's a larger company or a smaller company. I, different people are going to have different answers and you can learn from everybody. And so mm -hmm. it's always kind of neat to see, okay, how are you doing what you're doing? Right. How do you organize things? How do you, you know, especially since you're in a new space, it kind of gave you a, a chance to erase the whiteboard and start exactly. all over again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how is the warehouse organized so that it's the most efficient to get everyone through and get the product through right. and efficient. And so it, it's kind of nice to see how that's laid out and mm -hmm. uh, that uh, how all, how you have all your teams organized yeah uh, and that um, you know it, it seems just from walking around that it's a really cool place to work like it might even be one of the top places in Richmond to work you could say that I think you could say that yeah <laughs> we did get that designation actually so you're not just uh you know another plug there you're, you're doing nice see the man does his homework, right? Try to do homework. <laughs> Try to do a little bit of research. Yeah. But um, but but it's been very nice to see, and I appreciate you uh, uh, hosting me here as on my uh, my stop through. That I thought it would be again, kind of fun to see what's going on, and uh, uh, and and that I've enjoyed my time here, and that uh, uh, yeah, some other activities at lunch. I think there's a big contest going on at lunch. There is. Today. We are having a mac and cheese cook off today, and it, the timing just happened to work out. In fact, you can thank John Lane from Pilot because um, we had a lunch while he was here last Friday, yeah. and that's when we were originally supposed to have the mac and cheese cook off. But because we were doing lunch for that visit, we pushed it back to this week. So well, you get a free lunch out of the Sounds deal good. Well, I look result. forward to trying the mac and cheese, and then I'll hit the road for the rest of the day. But um, but I've, I've enjoyed this, and it's uh, been uh, uh, educational and a lot of fun. Absolutely. And uh, where can people find you if they're interested? Uh, you can videos? find me on YouTube. at. Uh, you can just look look for Figboot or Figboot on Pens on YouTube, on Instagram. Uh, I'm rather active. Uh, and uh, you can find me at Figboot11 on Instagram. Uh, I typically uh, have a different pen I rotate through every day. So my one thing I at least do is I shoot, I take a picture of, hey, this is my pen of the day. Of This is what I'm using today. And I try to rotate through maybe about three quarters of my collection. And so if you kind of want to see a whole collection, you can kind of uh, look at that each day over several months and you get an idea of kind of the things I do. And I try to take like a different pen to work each day and, and nice. rotate through those things. Uh, so you can find me in both of those places, uh, or you can email me at uh, at figbootonpens at gmail dot com and uh, and answer any questions that you have when you're done answering uh, question or sending questions to uh, to Brian. <laughs> awesome, and of course you can comment on this video. Do you have a question of the week that you want uh, everybody to answer in the comments? I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, but I usually like to do that. We're putting this video in place of Q and A, so well, let's uh, see. How about get some the, comments? Like for me, the Twisby. Uh, Diamond 580 was the pen that made me think like what else is out there that's really cool mm. so maybe like what's the one thing in the pen world that you got that really triggered you to want to learn more and, and want to uh, 
uh, to go a little bit deeper into the hobby. There you go, the one that made you peer over the rabbit hole and maybe yes. start to fall down into it. Cool, all right, so answer that in the comments. Thank you so much, David. It's been great to have you here, man. Thanks Appreciate for having me. Thanks very much, thanks everybody, and right on. Bye.